The Lord be with you. And, also with you. and welcome to church on this Good Shepherd Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And uh, today we're going to talk about, we are going to talk about Good Shepherd Sunday. That's the theme. And we're going to talk about Psalm 23 in particular. Um, I was, as I was thinking about this psalm, it reminded me a little bit of Beauty and the Beast in this way. At the beginning of the story, uh, there's this arrogant young prince and uh, this old um, haggard lady comes to him and he kind of scoffs at her and turns her away. But it turns out she's what? A sorceress, a beautiful enchantress, right? So things are not always as they seem. <laughs> that is also the case with Psalm 23. Things are not always as they seem. And we're going to maybe look at, look at Psalm 23 in a slightly different way this morning and see what type of comfort still, and a more profound comfort even, God gives to us. So let's rise and greet one another, and then we're going to begin with our opening hymn. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have been baptized into Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. He has made you a member of his flock, the church. The Lord is my shepherd. He has promised to defend you and provide for you. He has promised never to leave or forsake you. The Lord is my shepherd. Indeed, the Lord is the good shepherd. Yet you and I, we are sheep. 
We are sheep who cannot care for ourselves and who have no defenses. We are sheep who constantly pray away. This morning, our shepherd has come to seek us out again. So let us go to him and confess our sin. Jesus, my shepherd, I confess that I have wandered away from you. I have not trusted you to provide for me, and so I have gone my own way. When you have called me to follow you with service of others, I have adored you, imagining that I knew better. Forgive me, Jesus, for doubting you. Forgive me for not trusting your promise. Jesus is the good shepherd. And this good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep so that they might remain with him forever. And to these sheep he has promised a place in his house and a seat at his table where the banquet never ends. Therefore, as an under-shepherd of the true shepherd and by his authority, I forgive you your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death,
The first reading is from the book of Acts. Now from Miletus, Paul sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time, from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable, and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among you own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Of those who trouble me, you 
have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle is from the book of Revelation. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd. He will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our common faith found in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in all things At this time, I'd like to invite any children forward for the children's message. Well, that's like a first on Sunday morning. My children are here. I guess you're all gone for Mother's Day. Hey, no, Daniel, pretend these are the children. All right, good. Hey, if anyone else wants to join, you're welcome to. Excellent. There we go. That's right. Okay, well, good morning. How are y'all this morning? <laughs> All right. So, do you know what a shepherd is? Yes. Okay, what, what's a shepherd? Yes, Tim. A shepherd is someone who takes care of sheep. That's right. So, a shepherd takes care of sheep. What kind of care does a shepherd take? What, what does a shepherd do for the sheep? Yes, Matthew. They feed them. They feed them. They do. That's right, absolutely. They keep up from getting sick. They do. Well, that, that's a good, I hadn't thought of that. That's very good. So a, a shepherd will keep their sheep safe and will uh, take care of their sheep. And in our psalm today, the Lord is called our shepherd. So just like a shepherd will take care of their sheep, the Lord takes care of us. What are some ways that the Lord takes care of us? More ways than I can, that's, amen. That's good. How else? He gives you people who love you. He gives, yes, absolutely. He gives you people that love you. He did give us mothers. Yes. He gives us food. Gives us our food. And communion too. And that's, that's one way I was going to take that. We, we uh, the Lord gives us forgiveness. He gives us his word. He gives us our food, our drink our house, our home, everything that we have gives us the forgiveness of our sins here at church and when we're home too and when we read the word. Will you all pray with me? Dear Jesus, Jesus, thank you you for being our good shepherd. shepherd. Help us us to trust you to to take care of us. us. In In your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, children.
text for our sermon this morning is uh, Psalm 23 uh, as a whole, but especially this verse, uh, Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I was mentioning to the Bible study this morning that I mowed my yard yesterday, and I waited a week, which at this time of year is kind of a risky thing to do. Um, the rain has really been doing its thing, and the grass is growing thick and dense, and yesterday was more like pl- plowing than mowing. Uh, but then again, that's just the time of year. You can look at the trees, and all of them are bursting with leaves. The flowers are beautiful. That's just the way that it is, and that's the way that it is pretty much every year. Uh, but there is something different this year than last year. This year, my youngest son, Edmund, or Teddy as we sometimes call him, uh, has no problem with the mower or the weed eater. In fact, sometimes he gets a little too close and I have to say, scoop back, scoop back. Don't want him to get hit by a piece of weed eater string or a rock or something like that. Uh, But last year, things were very, very different. He would stay inside the house and he would watch the mower through the window and get very, very excited about it. But he would not go anywhere near it unless there was someone else there to hold him. It's kind of always that way with children. When a thunderclap booms, makes the house and the walls, or the walls of the house shake and tremble. Uh, A few seconds later, there's another sound that often follows, the shouts of fear of children as they race down the hallway to their parents' bed. The storm thunders on, but now they're safe with mommy and daddy. And parents do what it takes to keep their children safe, even if they're protecting them from threats that children don't see. Car seats, which are very frustrating to take in and out. Uh, Helmets, child-proof caps, which are often adult-proof. Gates on stairs, vaccines, smoke detectors, whatever it takes to keep children safe. And it doesn't stop with children. We all want to feel safe and do whatever it takes to ensure that we stay safe. We willingly pay more for a safer car. We carry pepper spray, have panic buttons on our key fobs, which for me is what I use when I lose my car in the parking lot. That happens very frequently. And then we learn self-defense techniques so we can feel safe on our way to the car. We buy guns and permits to carry them to feel good about having that one extra level of safety. And when we fly, we also willingly submit to unpacking our carry-on bags, taking off our shoes and belts, being patted down, wanded, walking through that x-ray machine. It's pretty intense. (laughs) We invest in doorbell cameras, deadbolts, home security systems, and it's all worth it to be safe. We go to financial planners, set up retirement accounts, buy all sorts of insurance, and plan for a safe future retirement Whatever it takes, whatever brings security and comfort and assurance, that's what counts. And I think it's that drive for safety that makes Psalm 23 such a well-loved passage. It's such a comforting thing, all those images and feelings, fluffy, lazy sheep in a lush green meadow with waters nearby bubbling over the rocks, and standing watch as a strong but kind-looking shepherd with his staff. That's a picture of safety and security to put the soul at rest. A lot like that one, kind of up there on the wall. People love to feel safe and secure. The good shepherd watching over them is exactly what they need. Like a child snuggled up in his mother's arms, a woman with a 9 millimeter in her purse, or a man with a fat retirement plan, Psalm 23 makes people feel safe. And that's what we want. We want to feel safe. And for many people, even many Christians, that is the highest priority, the highest good. There are very few things people are unwilling to do or buy so long as it provides them with that little bit extra feeling of safety. But it doesn't work, really. Ultimately and finally, you can't buy safety. You might be able to pull it off for a little while. The right car might help you survive a head-on crash. And the right investments might help you make it through a stock market crash. But in the end, it all fails. It all crumbles. And eventually, the evil you fear and the dread finds you. And it takes you. No castle wall can keep the killer away. No vaccine can stave off the inevitable forever. No money can buy a way out of danger. Relentlessly and tirelessly and ruthlessly, death 
keeps stalking, keeps hunting, and keeps winning. It's out there, and no one is ever really safe. See, there's a world of difference between feeling safe and being safe. Feeling safe is an illusion. It's the same storm, whether the children are in their parents' bed or their own. And if a tornado, a surprise tornado, lurks in the storm, a blanket and a bedspread don't do much. No matter how you feel, you are never safe. And danger and death stalk and can claim you at any moment. An earthquake, a heart attack, a stray bullet, a distracted driver, a persistent microbe, you're never safe or in control. Finally, it all ends badly. It doesn't matter how it feels. Feeling safe does not mean that you are safe. And no one is safe, not even the person who cherishes and clings to that wonderful Bible-based Psalm 23 feeling of heavenly security and safety. In the end, even that feeling is nothing but an idol, a false god. Safety is not the goal. Safety is not God. Safety is an idol that gets in the way of the real God. Actually, the only real God is not safe at all. In his book, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, C.S. Lewis makes his Christ figure, Aslan, a threatening, unpredictable, and truly terrifying lion. <laughs> There's nothing safe about God. He is almighty, all-knowing, all-encompassing, holy, and completely just. He does what he wants and when he wants. He's not safe. But he is God, the only God. And when you make feeling safe your top priority and your ideal, you are actually driving out the unsafe, dangerous, real God who is also, in fact, the only hope and the only protection from the evil that stalks you. God has no interest in making you feel safe. And believe it or not, the psalm that sings the work of the Good Shepherd is not actually intended to give you good feelings of comfort and assurance either. Far from it. Psalm 23 is not a biblical pacifier. It's not something aimed at giving you good feelings. Actually, Psalm 23 is about living a life in tune with God. The Good Shepherd gives his sheep the best, greenest grass and the clearest, coolest waters. But he does not give them these things so that they can lounge in green pastures. He gives them these things so that they can get up and follow the shepherd. He leads, and you follow. You step in his tracks, going where he wants you to go, doing what he wants you to do. That's exactly what it means to be a disciple. Not just someone who learns from a textbook. Not just someone who get good, gets good vibes from a guru. No, a disciple follows. You walk in the paths of virtue. You do actions that conform to his standard of righteousness. You strive to do what he wants. You learn to die to yourself daily and live for others. You forget about securing and hanging on to your own security. You topple that idol and stomp that false god into the dirt. You follow your true God in a way of life that is often exhilarating, frequently scary, and regularly dangerous. You keep following your good shepherd even when he leads you right into the very heart of dark, the darkest, gloomiest haunts, overflowing with demonic evil. You keep following even when the smothering threat of danger is so real and so heavy that you cannot even breathe. That's what Psalm 23 is about. It's about sheep who go where their shepherd goes. It's about you living your life God's way and rejecting forever the false god of safety. One of the great threats to your Christian faith is your love for feeling safe. Kill that idol. God does not offer safety. Psalm 23 does not hold out a feeling of security. No, what the shepherd offers is this, the paths of righteousness, 
of being in a right relationship with the good shepherd. And being in a right relationship with the good shepherd means that you follow on what is most certain to be a terrifying path. That's the point of Psalm 23. It's a picture of the challenge of the Christian life and also a picture of the joy of Christian life. It's true. Our God, our shepherd, is not safe. But C.S. Lewis adds something to that disturbing claim about God. God is not safe, but God is good. Aslan is good. God is good. All the time. Say it. God is good. <laughs> All the time. That's right. Our God is our good shepherd. And he will lead you in ways that are dreadfully hard and demand so much more of you than you ever thought you could do. It is so very hard to learn to die to yourself. It's hard to let your dreams and desires wither on the vine. It hurts. But with God, all things are possible. And that's where your good shepherd leads. He will lead you in ways that will shock you and scare you and shake you to the core. But on the far side of the dark valley, another scene greets your eyes. Your good shepherd will lead you at last to his quiet pasture and to his table where he will feed you and give you not just a feeling of safety. No, he will give you the real deal, eternal safety, peace that does not end, and joy in his presence forever. That is your future, an everlasting banquet spread out before you and a place set at God's own table with your name on it. That is where your good shepherd leads you. We are all sheep. Every single human being is just a sheep trying to stay alive, trying to figure out how to survive. Those who do not follow the good shepherd can only hurry and hide and plan and provide and try to escape the evil that they fear, the evil that stalks and always finds them, and they fail. Every sheep is being stalked. Even you who follow the good shepherd are being stalked. But there is actually a difference. Our English translation of Psalm 23 does not bring this out very well, but the truth is that for you, it's not evil and death that stalk. Our English translations say that God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, but that's not quite right. Now, it should be, surely goodness and mercy shall pursue you, hunt you down, stalk you. You are God's sheep, and you are being stalked, by God's goodness and God's mercy. Right now, they are stalking you, following you all the days of your life. It doesn't get any better than this. You follow where your shepherd leads, even through the dreariest days, the darkest room, and the most dreadful terrors. You follow your shepherd, and right behind you is your shepherd's goodness and mercy, hunting you down. You're being stalked by grace. You're being stalked by God while you're busy following in the tracks of Jesus. Jesus is busy tracking you. <laughs> well, after the grass was cut and the mower was back in the garage, that's when Edmund was ready. That threat, that scary thing for him was over, and he'd trot on that newly cut, dense, green spring grass. And then we would play a game together. With a twinkle in my eye and a twinkle in his, I'd say, Teddy, I'm going to get you. <laughs> and he'd laugh, and he'd squeal, and I'd pick him up high into the air, and I'd grab him tight in a hug, green grass, shouts of joy. A father's love doesn't get much better than that. God is stalking you, little sheep. He's hunting you down, and he's going to get you. <laughs> Believe it or not, he's going to get you. Amen. Now may the peace of God which transcends our understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We now worship the Lord and serve our neighbor with our offerings, and you may remain seated.
We rise for prayer. Heavenly Father, in your name, your Son purchased us with his own most holy blood, and he now leads us through the gate of death to our eternal home with you. As a sheep of his fold, inspire us to hear his voice gladly and to follow him steadfastly through every tribulation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord God, shepherd of souls, your servant Paul entrusted his flock to the care of faithful men, urging them to follow him in the way of Christ. Bless your church today under the care of her pastors and instill in them all wisdom, fortitude, humility, and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O Lord, you have provided us with the gift of family. Bless those who have shown us a mother's love and nurtured our lives from childhood. Bless and protect all mothers with child, all those who have suffered miscarriage or the death of a child, and all those who have yearned for a child and live with the pain of this unfulfilling longing. Lord, in your mercy. Your Compassionate Lord, you will not allow any power enemy to triumph over your saving purpose or snatch your lambs from your hand. Give us wise and faithful leaders who will govern our land according to your law and defend the lives of the unborn, the orphaned, the widowed, and the aged. Bless all those who make and minister and judge our laws that they may not hinder your purpose. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have not forgotten us in our afflictions or abandoned us in our weakness. Deliver the sick and suffering to your will and give comfort to those who are sick, especially to those who have requested our prayers, including Sharon, Nancy, Eni, Teresa, Edna, Cynthia, Noma and Lueta, Bill and Dell, Dante, Tino, Larry, Robin, Clyde, Dobnia family, Myrna, Deborah, Melissa, Eddie, Antoinette, and Shaughness, Della, Roger, Alicia, Marilyn, Leo, Anthony, Bernie, and Steve. Guard us against despair and grant us patience in the days of our troubles as we await your perfect healing. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, by your grace, bless all who receive our Lord's body and blood in the sacrament this day, as they receive the same body and blood given into death and raised again for their justification. Grant them the joy of the forgiveness of sins and the power of an endless life. Help them by this sacrament to live out their baptismal life, dying in repentance and being raised in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, enthroned in heaven, you gather your saints into the shelter of your presence, making them white in the blood of the Lamb. Keep us faithful throughout our lives here and bring us through death to join them in the ceaseless praises of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the uh, service of the sacrament, and just as a reminder, as uh, Lutherans, we believe not only that we receive the true body and blood of Jesus under the bread and wine for our forgiveness, uh, but also it serves for us as a confession of our faith, that we all hold the same doctrinal truths and teachings. Uh, finally, it's a sign that we throw our lot in together with one another, that we take on one another's sufferings, and that we take on one another's joys as well. So if you're not a member of a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, it's appropriate to refrain from communing until you've had an opportunity to speak with me. Um, until that time, though, we do welcome you up to receive a blessing, and you can request a blessing by placing, placing your arms across your chest like this, in the form of it's kind of like St. Andrew's Cross. We continue with the preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, 
who is sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise, and we will continue with our host communion canon. Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. To make the first is a uh, lily. So if you haven't yet taken a lily, they are free to take, and uh, you can plant them. So you can plant them, and uh, hopefully they'll grow. So that's that. Uh, also, there's an elders meeting after church. So if you're an elder, don't forget about that. I recognize that it is Mother's Day, so I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, a few things to talk about there, though. Uh, take a look at page. Let's find what page it is. Page, page. All right. 
Well, page 26, there are the uh, favorite hymn books, number 12, favorite hymn books out there. They're large print, so if you haven't taken one yet, feel free to do that. Uh, if you took one last week and you'd like to take another, go ahead and do that as well. Go back to page, page 25 and look at number 8, the adult spring fling. Uh, the sign-up for that is coming very, very soon. So even when is the due date for that, the sign-up for the spring fling? Where is it? Don't go to text? It probably does. I just didn't read all the text. <laughs> Thursday is a sign up. How many people do we have signed up right now? Not capacity. Not capacity. Okay. Plenty of room for you. Plenty of room for you. All right. So come along to that again. Dr. Jim Marriott's going to be there providing some entertainment. Uh, you and I are going to do some other things and we'll see what else we can get going. But it's going to be a fun time. So I encourage you to, to make that part of your plans. Uh, also, uh, there are elections coming up. And if you look out in the narthex, uh, there is a list of positions that need to be filled, and uh, I'm guessing that you are just the person to fill one of those positions, which is great. So take a look at those. If you don't know what a particular board is, you can ask me, you can ask uh, Mr. Shear, you can ask Keith, uh, and we'll be happy to give you some more information on that. Uh, but uh, definitely could use uh, some extra hands around the church. Uh, as you know, a lot of stuff gets done here, uh, but it often gets done by only a handful of people. Uh, so we certainly could use some extra assistance, so please do take a look at that. Uh, also, let's see, we're going to start taking something here. Mr. Berkey, do you want to talk about that or do you need to talk about that? Oh, you need to talk about it. Okay, I'll talk about it. Good. All right, so what we're going to be doing is this. Um, there uh, is this, uh, one of our teachers uh, has gone through a very difficult time here. Should I elaborate a lot on this? Should I? Okay. So one of our teachers over at this school, um, uh, the, um, her uh, husband has gone through a very serious problem, and that is that um, he was shot, actually. Uh, a couple months ago, and he was shot in the head and uh, survived um, and is making very, very slow progress, but he is making some progress. So as you can imagine, this has required a tremendous amount of time on her part, uh, going to be with him. Uh, she also has several children, so taking care of the children, taking care of her husband has been very taxing on her and has required her to be out of the school for quite a while. So uh, Salem normally has like a limited number of days that, uh, personal days we call them, that you can take for this sort of thing. And especially for teachers, a substitute has to be hired. You can't have the children by themselves. It doesn't really work very well. Um, so you have to get a substitute in there. And so what we're doing is we're setting up a, uh, buy, a, teacher a, a buy a teacher a substitute fund, okay? So basically it's this. Um, it will be uh, a fun so that if the teacher comes into a situation like this one, they can take the time that they need without their salary being affected. Does that make sense? It doesn't come out of their paycheck. Um, especially in her situation, I think that would be something that would be very nice for us to do. Um, so if you have any questions about that, further questions, I'm going to direct you to Mr. Berkey. He'll be happy to take any, any extra uh, comments you might have there or questions you might have. So that's a great thing we can do for our teachers. Again, great things are happening over there. One final thing that I want to mention, and this is just to give you plenty of advance notice. Um, Tim, Mr. Schulte, is being ordained. For, did that surprise to you? <laughs> <laughs> He's still shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Okay. Um, you say you had to, yes. Um, first Sunday in June, which I think is the 5th, correct? June 5, uh, at 2 p.m. at Salem, which is very cool. So he's going to be ordained here, and he's also going to be installed with Lutheran Bible translators. Uh, he would like to extend an invitation to all of you folks. Um, we are his home church, actually. Salem is his home church. So you are uh, definitely invited to participate uh, in Tim's uh, ordination. I'd love to see you there. And, uh, of course, you know, we're going to hate to see him go, but he's going to spend two years in training before he goes with LBT, and he said that's going to be in Concordia, Missouri, and I thought rather than having him drive three hours every Sunday morning to help out here, <laughs> we might as well consider that something like a last Sunday. So come on to his ordination, that'll be a, a great event there. Do you want to add anything to that, or you don't have to if you don't want to, I think that's everything. I think that's everything. Okay, good. Any other announcements? I think there was one more person who told me that I should remember something this morning, and I have forgotten what that was. So any other announcements? Oh, yeah. Where's Fred Petty? Yes, Fred Petty. Okay. How did the car wash go? Uh, so we so we had uh, I think seven volunteers, and we washed 21 cars. And uh, I, I had, had had planned for a maximum of 25, and, and that was a real stretch. So 21 was a real effort, but it it was wonderful. 
And, and we touched a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people tried to give us money. We said no thanks, and they thought that was wonderful. So I think it was a good, good uh, uh, community service project. I agree with that, and also that the type of cars we had come in, uh, you could tell that these are folks who needed a free car wash. Um, there was one where the, the door was sort of like a concave look. You know, it had been smashed in on the side, and, and they could definitely use some help. And it was great. We got to talk to some people. You're right. It was very good. And when, toward the end, when we were running out of time, uh, we put cones at the top of the parking lot. And uh, boy, that didn't stop people. Uh, they found a way through. So <laughs> that was good. All right, good. Go in peace and serve your neighbor.